Are you a rehearsaholic? I love rehearsing. Do you like performing as much as rehearsing? Well, some days rehearsing is just so much fun. I mean, the, the, the discovery of things and things like that. And Why? Because you can go anywhere? Because it's new. Because it's because new and you're talking about things and everybody's trying to do something. And it's, it, it, there is a tremendous excitement when something lifts for the first time. Right. And then it doesn't again. And again, I mean, I, I, mean, I could go into a lot of, you know, that's a... I've often liked working with the, um, directors where that lift was a, also... It's misleading. And then the, you mourn because you can never find it again. But again, I always like with Jason Byrne, you know, that was beautiful and never happened again. Or that was shitty and never happened again. That's a wonderful, that was a wonderful kind of mantra for me about these things, about making choices. Choices aren't as, I mean, once you, I mean, um, you know, once you know the play and the world of the play well enough, there's no such thing as a good or a bad choice. As long as everybody's playing in that, the world that we've established, there's just choices. And, um, and, and the only bad choice is one that doesn't tell the story that you're actually do, doing. But to be, you know, so again, to get a, you know, and because I think that in theater performing, one of the great hardships is the rep repetition. And then we're faced with our human nature. At first, it's so scary because we don't know what we're doing. Then it's kind of pleasing because we do know what we're doing. Then it's kind of boring because we're doing the same thing over and over again. Why can't we just stay in one lovely spot, you know? And also that the longer you perform a piece, there's this kind of weight of expectation and weight of the history of what's happened, good nights, bad nights. And how do you get out of that and just have a moment again? Or And when you did Festin, right? I got it was open-ended, what yeah, happened every and night. And again, but that was a big company, little dialogue in the sense that it wasn't a, it was an action-driven piece, a very, very, provocative subject of, and with a big cast. So you have a lot of imaginations that can work and no set blocking. And really no, very, really going into a dangerous lane where the stage managers are about to get up and go, wait, wait a minute, we caught the rules, we can't probably do it that way, somebody's gonna get hurt. So you'd walk into that. And it was, it was amazing to me how scary it was to rehearse. And the rehearsals weren't, there was never any table work. Nobody ever talked about it. Wow. Jason just started, and you would come in to rehearsal all these people, and suddenly somebody would start, and you Jason, could, Jason, Jason Byrne, this was this okay. Irish, lovely Irish director. And he talked about this moment because he, he, he liked this kind of form, and this is a kind of, you know, this kind of way of working. Because he got so tired of the moment when the moment worked the first time in rehearsal, and then you couldn't find it again, you mourned it. And again, it's, it's the difference between we know how to sing the song, and singing this, just singing the song the same way every night, it's very difficult in that. And anything that can mitigate or allow you to come back into the moment and just be there is, is to be encouraged. But you have to be there with, armed with the information of the world and what you're doing I, I, in order for them to be no right or wrong choices. And the other thing it does, there's no right or wrong choices, it gets you off your own fucking back about judging. That was a good moment, that was a bad moment. Or they don't like me. They don't like me. Keeps you busy in your own moment, just doing your job, and that, and partly that is to shut up your own mind about am I good? Am I bad? Do they like me? Do they not like me? And leave them alone. Do you have that voice? I, oh Christ! I used to have it when I was a younger actor. It was terrible, and especially doing a one-man show. You would get you know I get furious at the audience because they weren't laughing at the same time. Was I and because and really the anger has to do with a terrible sense of insecurity that suddenly wells up in you. And did the voice, has the voice mitigated over the years? Oh, I have a better chance now of going, shut up. You can say that on stage? To yeah. myself, yeah. To yourself? And go, this is, you know, don't worry about it. They, because part of me goes, the acting isn't happening in me, it's happening in them. Right. And they should, and, and, and I don't want to be a fascist to them. I don't want to say, look at me, look at this, look at that, laugh louder, laugh loud, I'll be louder. You know, this kind of thing to manipulate the audience. Yeah. But again, I can only get to that part by the ant work of hard, 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 hard rehearsal yeah. and process. And then into the audience process. So when you talk about Billy Bishop, for example, I've done that play all my life in three different places. And so my ease with that 
is because w what the play has become to me is this wonderful excuse for theater to happen. And I am relaxed in that. So I can do a character, we can be in the First World War, or I can step out of it as John and I would do and go, can I help you to your seat? People laugh, we're, we remind ourselves we're all lives, human beings here tonight, and we're just doing a play, and then go right back into the play and they'll stay right with me. In fact, even more so, because, you know, woman coffee, here, do you want a glass of water? Then I'm, I'm, I'm just Eric Peterson, the guy, the actor. But again, there's something that has to do, that's not about artifice, and yet we'll just go back to pretending now. And those three sessions through Billy Bishop, three, three different parts of your life, three different parts of your career, how did that change with you maturing as a, an actor? With well, you? again, it points out that casting is a fate in a production. You can pick the play, that's the first fate. The second fate is casting the play. You are unleashing a doom, a fate. So what doom? you well again like doom in the sense you oh, see. you know so as opposed to the kind of directing where you go this guy will play this part and I can see him playing this part well who knows I mean I I love it you just hire actors who you think are inventive and whatever and we're gonna we don't know what the production is going to be but we'll get to one that's did your own. point so, of view on the history change over those three times. The history of Billy Bishop, the history of the war, the no, history of... that was still always as evocative and as powerful to me as the first time I started to inquire into it, which had to do with the horror of that experience and trying to put that together. What was very different from the first time we did it and the last time we did it, the last time we did it, Canada actually was at war. Right. And we had young men and women, or not so young men and women, in Afghanistan. The rest of the country paid no attention to it. We were still busy shopping arguing about politics, and only they and their families were involved in it. But for me and, and the audience, there was something about his young face and the newspapers that you were actually seeing in the news part of the paper, not in the history books. Mm -hmm. But what happened was the casting changed drastically. Then. We were early 30s, we were early 50s, we were early 60s. And regardless, I could say that I was a better actor at 60 than I was at 30. That doesn't really explain it. I was a different, I was just an older person, and therefore my acting had different, and we found different things in the play. We came in a slightly different, as only you can. But again, that just goes back to the fate of the casting of it. If you're going to cast old people in it, you're going to find something else in those very same words than then a younger person will find in those very same words. None of them's better or worse than anything else. They've all, you know, they'll all operate, I think the play is written solidly enough that it operates as a total vehicle. For I've only seen it twice, in the latest and probably the first, and it, and as much as I can remember correctly, the, sec the later one had more unconscious layers to it. Yeah. I'm not saying it was a richer show, because they were both totally compelling, but there was something about you and John and the position that you were then in as different people that added these unconscious layers to what we see. Well, again, we were now, a lot of that play has to do with the loss of friendship and people at that time, and John and I had become old veteran friends, too. So there was layers within layers of it. You know, this was the famous worries done by these famous, if you want to say it, actors and this famous play, for one thing. But, but again, I think as human beings, this is an older human being, at, at 30, my experience of actually losing loved ones and death and those aspects of it were nothing. If they were far more kind of theoretical than they were at 60, where you've lived through the loss of your parents and other friends, and and so the richness of that, and there was and and then coming at the play in the older version as a memory, as opposed to, and the younger version was I'm telling my war story. I'm just home from the front. Yeah. So. Now, both of them have their charms, yes. or they seem to work that way. Do you want to do it again? I can't imagine not doing it again with my old buddy John. Mm. But, I, and I don't want to do it again right now. We had a wonderful time at Soul Pepper doing it for that couple of years. And just recently put it that way. 
And now I'm older than Bishop ever lived to be. Mm-hmm. When the last time we did it, I was just be, be the same age as when he died, 62. I'm 67 now. So I don't know how we do it now. I see a trap door opening. <laughs> in, in, we coming up from hell, you know, to tell the story. Coffin lid creep. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the night of the living dead, you know, all you know, desiccated and things like that, carry that. I think we haven't been in a war for a while. Your jaw falls off or something like that. But, but that has more to do with a friendship uh, and a collaboration with a, a wonderful buddy of mine and this piece that, for all intents and purposes, I am a one-trick pony. This is the great pillar of my career, for lack of a better word.